I would like to welcome you here, Ben, and to Thank introduce you. you. So you're a senior engineer at MongoDB, and you work for uh, you work on building the MongoDB AI chatbot and the MongoDB chatbot framework. <laughs> your background is in both technical writing and software engineering, and you said you're definitely not GPT-4 in a trench coat. <laughs> Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And um, yeah, please take it away. Sure. All right. We're looking at my screen. Yes. Ah, sorry. All right. Hi. So in this talk, I'm going to be discussing the emerging generative AI content ecosystem. We're going to cover the rise of generative AI, what the generative AI content ecosystem is, and how you can adapt your content to thrive in this new ecosystem. So a quick bit about myself. I just had a wonderful introduction, so I don't need to get into it too much. But as mentioned, uh, I'm on the educational AI team at MongoDB. We work on the MongoDB AI chatbot, which is a chatbot that lets you interface with the MongoDB documentation using AI. You can check it out on our docs website, mongodb.com slash docs. We've also developed the MongoDB chatbot framework, which lets you add your own chatbot to your own website for technical documentation or otherwise. You can check it out at the docs website linked here. Additionally, I have a background in developer documentation, so I've produced some of that content, which you can now access through our chatbot. So hello and welcome to the generative AI era. If you are at this AI the Docs conference, you probably also think that generative AI is a really powerful technology that has the potential to have a wide variety of impacts really to everywhere as the slide indicates, but this includes our content and especially the way that it is consumed. Generative AI has created a whole new content ecosystem. And by content ecosystem, I mean the way that content is produced and consumed and everything around it. We're moving from a world of static web pages or other static assets like video to bespoke content that is personally generated in response to users and their queries. Right now, this is mainly in the form of chatbots, but we also see some other interfaces. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's an evolution of interfaces as the space evolves as well. We also, very importantly, have a lot more robotic readers of our content. So we've always had to take into account robotic readers, at least as long as uh, web search has been around for SEO purposes, search engine optimization, making sure that content ranks highly in Google or other search engine search results. But now we need to think about our robotic readers for a few more things, specifically for when robots come and scrape our content to train models be that a model that our organization develops or one developed externally, and also the usage of our content in retrieval augmented generation, which we'll talk more about in just a bit. So first, these AI models. These are the models like GPT-35 and GPT-4 from OpenAI, Google's Gemini, Anthropic Cloud, many open source ones. There's also smaller ones, it seems like there's some new notable model that comes out like every week in this space. It's a exciting time of a lot of growth. All of these models are trained on massive amounts of content. And perhaps this includes some stuff which you've written. If one of these models is decent at answering questions about your product, there's a very good chance that it's been trained on your product's documentation. It's also worth noting that these models can be fine-tuned to really be optimized for your use case. 
we don't see too much fine tuning going on in the wild right now, at least for content um, chat. But I wouldn't be surprised if this changes in the non-distant future as fine tuning becomes a bit easier to perform. Next, we have retrieval augmented generation. This has emerged as a really important aspect of the generative AI ecosystem. This is the idea that when a user inputs a query to an AI system, rather than the model just answering the user directly, based on the knowledge that exists within the model itself, a search is performed to find relevant content, which the model then uses to inform the answer that it generates for the user. This has a couple of distinct advantages. One, it reduces the model's hallucinations. Hallucinations being when the model makes stuff up. It's less likely to make stuff up if it has the correct information in front of it. And also that information in front of it, this context information can include stuff that the model was not trained on in the first place. So you can, in some senses, expand the knowledge base of a model with retrieval augmented generation. And additionally, you can include sources for where the, um, the search results came from alongside the generated content. So this helps users take their learning journey from just the generated answer back to the original source content. One popular method of retrieval augmented generation that we see these days is with web search. This is particularly popular in these centralized tools like ChatGPT, which has support for Bing, or Google Gemini. So when you input some queries, they will go off and do a whole web search to find relevant content to help answer your question. Web search is nice because there's a lot of very useful data on the web, but it's also not as uh, optimized for your use case because you don't have so much control over this massive, massive search. It just gets what it gets. And well, these web search algorithms are pretty good. So you'll probably get decent content, but you don't have as much control over it. To assert more control, we can do domain specific rag. This is where you bring your own content and basically build your own search engine on top of it usually do this using a vector database, such as MongoDB's own Atlas Vector Search. And this lets you really control the data set and the way that it is retrieved to be used in the generated answer. The next component of this ecosystem is the interfaces. As mentioned, uh, we usually see chatbots now, but I wouldn't assume that that will be the case for the indefinite or even too near term future. We have these centralized interfaces, things like ChatGPT, Google's Gemini, GitHub Copilot, these central destinations where you can go to ask all kinds of questions, fairly general purpose tools, but they're also black boxes. You don't really know how they're implemented unless you work on them directly. And this makes it so you don't have so much visibility into what's going on or the data coming through it as it relates to your product. Some of them also come with plugins. For example, ChatGPT has custom GPTs, which has the potential to give you more visibility and control of the interface as it relates to your product. We haven't seen plugins become too popular yet, but I would not be surprised if that changes in the not so distant future because it really provides an opportunity to optimize your product to work with these very popular and useful tools. We also have our proprietary interfaces. These are things that we own using generative AI tools. For example, the MongoDB AI chatbot would be an example of this. And when you own the interface, this gives you a lot more control over the experience. For example, for MongoDB, we can make sure that our chatbot will not go and answer questions about SQL or, God forbid, recommend you to use SQL over MongoDB. And then you also have 
a lot more visibility into the data inside of it. So you can see what it is that users are asking and derive insights like how to improve the documentation source or even the product itself based on this user feedback. So now that we've covered the components of this ecosystem, let's see how you can adapt your content to really thrive in it. First, if you haven't already, I strongly recommend that you try and create a Docs chatbot. Doing this is a lot easier than it was just a short time ago. There's a ton of helpful tools and services and tutorials that can help you get started. There's open source libraries like Langchain and Llama Index, which are pretty popular. You have the MongoDB chatbot framework, which is a full stack framework that you can use to build your own chatbot. We have managed services as well, like Kappa AI and Mendable AI. And creating a docs chatbot, even if what you make never necessarily makes it to production, I think is a really useful exercise in thinking about how you can adapt your content to thrive in this new generative AI world. Next, start thinking about machine optimizing your content. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I know there's some other talks today that cover this in a lot more detail. but to provide a brief overview, something really useful is to make your content scrapable. So it's easy to be used by these new robotic readers for training models and retrieval augmented generation. And what this means in practice is have your content exist in a clean text format like HTML or Markdown. And what it doesn't mean is do not lazily load your content, say with JavaScript with an API call, because the robotic reader probably will not be able to execute that in its ingestion of the content. And relatedly, you should only use interactive elements. These things can be really nice for our human readers, like tabs, interactive code REPLs. Only use these as supplements to the text content that the robot can consume. Because now we have these two audiences and we need to take care of them both, our human readers and our robotic readers. And once you have a clean machine readable data set, consider gathering it all together and publishing it either internally, if you don't want to share it with the world, or externally in a place like Hugging Face or GitHub, because this will allow others to train models potentially on your data or do rag with it. Um, I mean, this one depends, where you publish it depends a lot on how you want others to use it. But I suspect that there will be some internal users at your organization who are interested in your data set, even if you don't want to publish it publicly. And this one's a pretty low cost thing to do once you've already cleaned your data up for your own docs chatbot like we talked about before. You just gotta centralize it. And this next item, this is a little more speculative, perhaps should be called a consideration item rather than an action item. But I recommend that you expose your content for programmatic access. And this can take the form of say a REST API. And the idea here being that you can use this content API in your chatbot. Perhaps you'll add in product features as well with generative AI that might have use for this data. As I mentioned before, these centralized interfaces have plugins. You can use the content in a plugin for say ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot when and if those come out. And we're also entering an era of AI agents. These are more autonomous AI systems that can take more complex actions on users' behalf. We haven't really gotten there yet, but it really seems like it's coming soon. So you wanna provide these AI agents with a first class way to interface with your content, which a content API can be, because they'll be able to reason with this better than your content just on the web. All right, so that covers it for what I wanted to discuss in this presentation. Here is 
a slide that I tried to aggregate everything together in a diagram. Hopefully it makes sense. Feel free to take a screenshot. I will also be at the conference later, hanging out and happy to answer any questions about this or anything else. And yeah, with that, uh, if we have any user questions, excuse me, listener questions, I'd be happy to take those now. Thank you so much ben, for your presentation. Um, <clears throat> I can see a few questions uh, in the Q&A. Um, the first most voted on question would be how much time went into the project and what teams or roles were involved? Sure. So for us to go from like empty repo to production took about three months. And the team that was involved, well, there hadn't been a team doing the stuff previously because it's so new, but our team, which worked on it, uh, three of us, we had been, I would describe us as like very technical content writers. So we were documenting some of like the developer um, SDKs at MongoDB. So we we're already in the code, but not necessarily putting code into production. And then we moved over to work on this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And another question is about your roadmap. If you can share anything about what is on your roadmap. Yeah. So for the MongoDB AI chatbot, the main things right now, I, I would describe it as a bit of a grab bag. Um, one is the way that you interface with it on our website. So you can access it on every single page, but conversations do not persist across pages. And they're also not aware of the page that you're on. So say you're on a page that is talking about Python language. Maybe like we want to, within the chat bot, like if you ask some sort of generic question, like how do I add data? It will just give you the Python because it can assume based on your context that that is what you want. But conversations persisting across pages is a big one. Um, Long-term persistence of conversations we've thought about as well. So like ChatGPT, how you can see all your conversations on the side. Perhaps you want to do something like that. And then there's also some exploration of including the chatbot and other parts of the MongoDB world besides the documentation website. So other facets of the website, perhaps in product in some places as well. Thank you so much.